Well, this is episode three, and what I'm going to do today is just change the transmission fluid, and then I tested some electricity going inside. But I've been away for a while, and I'm trying to get to it a little at a time. I got all summer to do it, so I'm still working on the mechanics. But here we go. It's a Chevy 350 turbo transmission. I'm going to change the fluid. Today I'm going to crawl under here and change the transmission fluid. I got my pan. I got a I got the carpet I'm sitting on. And I put the pan underneath. So first things first. I went around it. They're all kind of loose. I think that's why the pan is wet a little bit. So as you can see, I'm loosening them. Starting to leak already. That's it. I could drain the pan. So I'm looking inside the pan. It's a little dirty, but I don't see no nothing floating around in there. So maybe it just kind of caught it in time. Let me get this filter off. Save that. The filter looks pretty good. So there's no shavings or anything, but I'm going to save all of this and put it in an oil oil can, and I'll show you why. See, there's nothing on the bottom of that. That's a real good sign in that pan. Then I pour a little gas in there. I'm going to clean this pan out real good. Make sure you get all the crud out of there. And get a steel brush. And do the outside too. Now before I go to the auto store, I'm going to fill this jug up and look at it. See, that's going to tell me about how much new transmission fluid I'm going to need. I know already because it's filled up I'm going to need more than six quarts. So now I'm going to take these down to the auto store and match them up. All right now just for the heck of it I went under here and I checked all these bolts here before I put the filter back on. Make sure there was nothing loose because there's a plate up in here where this goes against so now I'm just gonna take my new filter I went down there and get that on there I put my spacer back in I'm gonna tighten this up so we got the filter on we're putting the gasket on the tr secret is to get it up there well, they had a, a cocking on it, but I don't want to do that. That stuff gets in the transmission. It'll ruin it. So now I'm setting all the bolts, pushing them right through. Just like that. That way that gasket stays on, and they paint at the bottom. See that? So now the trick is, get this pan up here. Get all these bolts started by hand. Get all the bolts in, start snugging it up a little bit so we don't have any binding. And after they're all snug up, I just keep going around, making sure everyone's snug, just like doing a banjo. You could use a torque wrench if you want, but you could feel it. So that's it. Went around. About five times, made sure they're all snug up good. Why did I paint this silver? Because that's the paint I had hanging around. And the last step is to fill it with transmission fluid. When you look on here, it tells you. It tells you exactly what transmission, Dextron, automatic transmission fluid only. So it's usually on your dipstick what it says. Last step is to fill it up. So that's it. We're going to put our 
thing back and start her up and go through the gears. Okay, the moment of truth. We go through all the gears. Make sure that fluid's getting around everything. Clicking in. Well, you gotta check it when it's running and hot. And in part, that's what it said. So we ran it around for a while, and there it is. You can barely see it it's right up there, even. So I'm happy about that. No leaks, it ran well. I got my fluid change. And then for my own satisfaction, just went around with the grease gun. And well, I'm working on the lights a little bit. The guy told me he has a three plug, pr plug like in your regular house. He puts a generator up here and he plugs it in. So I go over here. This is my what I call my shore power thing. And I find out that this is like 240, it's a prong. But I follow that wire and it comes up into here. And I'm gonna show you that. So that wire from down there comes into here. And this is a three, three prong. So I find out when I plug it in, it must go from 220 or 110 into the 220 and then we're going to go in the lights work so i got an extension cord and ran it to the house and i plugged it in i go inside and under the sink there is a box so i press it on they check all the lights in the cabin and they're working I check the air conditioner and that's working so I got that part figured out now me thinking in the way of sailboats I went and got the car battery right here and I put my test light on it ground whatever boom I got light you know what I mean so I followed these two wires, it's temporary, inside, inside to here, here's those two wires that come to the battery, and I got power that way. So like I said, uh, what I'm doing is still going through the mechanics, I, I got a lot more to do with mechanics in the next few episodes before I start getting on the road and traveling, so thanks for watching.